<laughs> this is this has been great. I tell you what, uh, when when Sam asked me to do this thing, I was thinking, you know, why it's like Jesus in Nazareth. You know, you got no repute in your hometown. Uh, you know, all these experts coming from all over the U.S. You, well, you want me to get up there and, and talk with them? And then everybody's given their Bartram testimony. How cool is that? You know, how did you come to Bartram? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's through uh, Tom's literature and Catherine is economics and uh, a, a trek through the woods. How great is this? Okay, I'm going to tell you how I came to Bartram. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just, uh, keep the thread going. Um, this, uh, I came to Bartram. Uh, I, first, I was first introduced to Bartram by my dad who gave me his copy of Bartram's Travels. I mentioned this yesterday. Uh, but um, I, I actually um, came to it in a very different way, which is, and this is the funny part about this, is completely legitimate to this whole, this whole thread of events. Um, I came to, to Bartram as a scientist. And uh, when Catherine started talking about this, the, you know, it's not Bartram and, you know, his writings and all this kind of stuff, despite what Tom said, you know, that's very cool. But uh, it's through, you know, the, the story, it's, the, it's, it's, it's deerskin trading, you know. No, it's not deerskin trading. It's the St. John's River. <laughs> now, seriously, this is cool. Um, I, I, I'm a, uh, an engineer scientist. I, as uh, Sam and others have said, I worked with the Water Management District for 33 years. And my job was, the, was involved in the restoration of the St. John's River. Uh, some of you guys, actually, my fellow experts probably wouldn't know this, but I, I managed a program and, and the, that uh, the intent of which was to restore the river, clean it up. <clears throat> well, we had no restore. You have to know what to restore to. You have to have a starting point. And so, um, you know, we thought, well, what did the St. John's River look like before we changed it before it began de uh, you know, degrading. You know, what are we going to restore point? What's, what, what did it look like? Well, I did what everybody else did. I said, well, what did it look like? I went to Google. I Googled St. John's River, you know, 1700. No images. Go figure. You know, so, so I thought, wait, you know, Bartram. Bartram was here. He, he, he gave all these great descriptions. Well, uh, so I picked up my copy of, of Billy Bartram and I started reading through it and it talked about, okay, here's what I saw, 17, you know, hundreds. Here's what the St. John's River looked like. It had these plants, it had this bottom, it had, you know, it was this wide, it was this long, and you could see through to this. Um, a perfect water quality and environmental quality picture of the St. John's River. Um, but it, it, like Tom said too, you know, it's hard reading. It was hard to get the meat out. I went to, uh, to my librarian at the Water Management District and I was talking to her, you know, that said, you know, is there any other information like this? And she said, and this is going to be heresy, especially to Tom, she said, have you read John Bartram's journal? John Bartram's, what's that? No. Well, John Bartram wrote a journal. It says, you need to look at that. So um, I got, she, she ordered it for me. I started looking at it. And um, the first thing that I found out, when I got it to open the thing up, I said, oh my gosh, you know, Willie Bartram was here 10 years earlier with his dad, John. This was a complete revelation to me. So, you know, I said, okay, so my image of John Bartram, or of Willie Bartram, had to change. You know, he was a 25-year-old when he actually wrote Travels. He was, he was probably more like this, thanks to Photoshop. You can now see what, <laughs> what William looked like. Uh, looked like when he was here, he was not the grizzled old octogenarian that we see in that previous image that everybody else used. You know, mine's a more modern one. Um, but he was here with his father, John Bartram. Now, I can't fix John. <laughs> yeah, he did, he did look like a troll, and, and that's the way he looked when he, when he came. So, so John, you know, that was John, you know, and now you know why he never put his picture on there. Uh, I, although I think I have seen him on Quaker Oats. I don't know. <laughs> Um, but, um, but John Bartram appealed to me as a scientist because unlike Williams Bartram's which you, writings, which you've seen and everybody's put up and they've read it very poetically, it's really cool, um, John Bartram wrote like I wanted to see it written on January the 24th. It's 43 degrees, the wind is out of the northwest, it's fresh. We, we crossed the river, we came to a point of land. 
where the, water, where the land transitioned uh, of middling elevation, transitioned to Palmetto, there was swamp on the left, swamp on the right. I understood that, okay? <laughs> that, that really appealed to me. So, um, so the first thing that I did when, at, after realizing that, that Willie was not really the old guy, he was really younger, the second thing I realized was that as he wrote about these places and he gave these descriptions, I said, oh my gosh, I know where that is. I know exactly what he's talking about. I can go there and I can see what he saw and see what he wrote and what it looked like and I can do it today. I can go there. And that was kind of the birth of the whole idea that Sam mentioned for the, of, gosh, let's retrace Bartram and Putnam. How cool could that be? You know, what a great picture of the past in comparison to the present. So that was, that was the concept. So, so this has now come full circle. And, and you're a part of it now because we said, well, if we'd like to do it, why wouldn't everybody on earth like to do it? <laughs> you know, and, and two, you've, see, you've heard from these other experts, there are so many ways to come to Bartram, you know, that, that anybody could come to Putnam County and they could have that Bartram experience and they could find out things they're interested in based on, on the Bartrams, their writings, and that kind of thing. So, so my part of the presentation is the fun part, and that is, well, how do we do it? Okay. So how do we build the Bartram Trails? It started off doing a kind of a four-step process. First was research on the Bartrams, on Florida, on um, Florida history, the natural history of Florida, uh, flora and fauna, the St. John's River Springs, you name it, uh, through all the publications and, and other resources. The second step was site identification. Let's find out where they are, plot them on a map. The second was the ground truthing part. Go out, look at it, does it fit with the description? Can we find it today? And then sec the last step is the organization. Let's compile this thing into something that, that resembles a trail. Something people can follow. Among those publications, there are three primary ones that we used uh, in identifying the sites. I've mentioned John Bartram's journal. That was kind of the first one. Uh, and that's what, uh, where John Bartram catalogs, diaries, his uh, three-month trip up the St. John's River and back. Uh, the second one was um, a report that, that William Bartram crafted and sent to Father Gill, you've heard this, uh, which took place kind of roughly between the time of, um, uh, of the publication of the journal and then travels. Uh, but it's his account of his return trip uh, to Florida and to Putnam County. And then finally was, was Billy, William Bartram's travels. And then um, I've put up another one on there, which is um, Harper's uh, version of this, Francis Harper, actually did kind of what we're doing, and that is, well, let's go back and find these places, see what they look like today. So somebody else has actually laid the groundwork, and his, his uh, publications have been a major find and a major resource. So that's one of the, those are the, the chief um, publications that we use to identify the actual sites as best we could and plot those dots on a map. Finally, um, as the... Um, the other resources that are available are, are fantastic, and that's what really brought this thing to life and let us really home in on where some of these sites are, even though some of the descriptions are, are fairly cryptic. Um, the, the types of resources we use, Florida History Online, uh, is a great resource. Um, there are a number of books and publications that are available online that you can actually uh, go in and look at and, um, and, and try to uh, get other people's view of where these sites were. Uh, there are books, um, the, the other resources like Google Earth, just being able to pull a map up and say, identify where that point of land might have been. When they cross the river to a point of land, oh, well, there it is, you know, you can zoom right in on it. Um, uh, GIS website, Putnam County's got a great GIS website that's got things like elevation. When he says middling ground that rose up to a 20 foot high bluff, you know, you can go on that, look at the contours and say, well, my gosh, there it is. It couldn't be over here. There's no, there's no rise. Over here, there's the rise. Let's go check it out. So um, those are some of the resources that we use to identify uh, where, they, where these sites might be. So we plotted those sites on the map, and then the fun part, and that's the ground truthing part. In order to ground truth it, 
it was absolutely necessary that we be able to know exactly how they traveled from point to point. So we'd know, well, is it logical that they actually rode their vessel, you know, 12 miles up or six miles up Rice Creek? Could they do that in, in the book? Does that make sense? So we purchased a bateau. You've always wondered what a bateau looked like, and we actually got in the bateau. And we, well, no, we didn't really. We, but we were kind of delighted that we could find out that it, what a bateau really was. <laughs> and that, if you're wondering, that's what a bateau uh, actually looks like. And it was a very common vessel back then. Uh, George Washington used it to cross the Delaware. Uh, but that's what a bateau looked like. So when John, when William came down the first time, he was in a bateau. Now, when he came back the second time, he was in what? Gosh, this is this causes all kind of, of trouble. It's described as a bark, a canoe, a neat little boat, a neat little sailboat. Um, the, uh, one thing we do know, though, and that's from this mural, you can see the sailboat parked over there uh, in the back. One thing we do know is that is not what it looked like. <laughs> he did not look like that, nor did he have a Panama hat, straw Panama hat on. Him. Um, and I think that's a West Marine shirt, too. He's coming. Um, but regardless, um, needless to say, we couldn't really replicate that. So what we had to do is we had to resort to getting in, in Sam's truck. We had to resort to getting in the kayaks and paddling. It was, it was torturous, to be sure. Torturous, to be sure. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, uh, we, resorting to whatever means necessary to find these actual places, we, we went and we looked at the dots. We, we looked at our maps, we said, okay, let's go see, does it fit? Let's re take the description, let's read it, let's stand there, let's see if it fits. Um, we went out, and this is, this is one, this is Mud Spring, where, where we thought was uh, one of the visits, places that, that Bartram visited, we had high hopes for it. It really seemed to meet the description, but when we got there and, and we paddled uh, north, from there we started thinking, you know, this didn't fit and it's not fitting. Uh, it says this, and this is what it looks like. Um, and we ended up, uh, after that, we went, ended up at Satsuma Spring, and this is what Satsuma Spring uh, looks like. And I, I can assure you, most of you have never seen that, despite the fact you've probably lived here in Putnam County all your lives. Uh, but that's Satsuma Spring, and it's, a, it's an absolutely lovely site. But, but what this is illustrates is that, that when you find a Bartram site, uh, and you read the text to the, what Bartram wrote about it. And you, uh, you can hold that text in your hand and you can stand right there and you can say, um, oh, it came down off of a, a 20 foot high bluff. There was a fountain of water, a clear stream big enough to run a mill. Uh, it, it smelled uh, of gun barrel or, or bilge water. Uh, and the bottom was covered in white. And as you read that and you walk down the hill, and you look at that and you go, whoa, I won't, to quote Sam, who farted? <laughs> and, and then you read, <laughs> as my wife goes like this, um, it, it was a quote, that's what Sam said. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, did I quote you properly? Okay, I'm off the hook. But you, and you look down in the water and you see the, the uh, sulfur bacteria on the, on the, on the, growing on the, uh, on the substrate of the little stream. And you just, you have to look at each other like Sam did and said, oh my gosh, you are literally standing, this is it. This is it, you are now standing where, where John Bartram stood when he wrote about that. Uh, and that, it's cool. And you, and you do, you think, you know, everybody should do this. Everybody should want to do this. And so that's the way we did it. Uh, that's the way we identified. There are 31 sites that we've identified that you, we can say legitimately, you know, John Bartram walked here, or, uh, you know, I'm, I'm concentrating on John. I know it's heresy. You know, Willie was there too. He was right behind him, you know, walking along. Uh, but, uh, but this is where John Bartram, so William was there, so he was there, to, you know, they both were there. Um, but, but we've identified 31 sites in Putnam County. Now that means that we're going to have to annex uh, Salt Springs. You know, but we put that in because you know you're almost there. 
Um, but they stretch anywhere from Palmetto Bluff uh, up at the north end of the river all the way down to Drayton Island and Rocky Point in the south uh, of the river. Uh, 31 sites that, that are linked by little dots. And what we did then was we took those dots and we said, well, let's, let's connect these dots with trails so that when uh, visitors come to Putnam County, they can visit as many of these sites as possible using whatever mode of transportation they prefer. Uh, so we've got uh, Bartram biking trails. Each of these sites now connected by bike trails. Uh, the driving trails uh, to be used only in inclement weather. Um, <laughs> waterway trails, the preferred method by paddle. Um, and these are mostly along the St. John's River, although uh, there are some that are a little bit afield, uh, which covered the, those trips that William Bartram made when he went over to uh, Alatra County uh, and other places. Um, and then there's the hiking trails. So the system, uh, as we have conceived, it will have these, uh, these uh, four different methods that you can enjoy your Bartram experience, maximize your experience in Putnam County. Um, other visitor resources, uh, kiosks at key locations, an education center that uh, will have information and maybe even the uh, barrel hoops from the, uh, the frolic, who knows, uh, printed brochures, maps, um, and, and then uh, there'll be site signage uh, as well as a website and those two components are really key to our entire Bartram Trail for Putnam County as we've mentioned. Uh, the Bartram Trails um, Putnam County website as uh, Sam mentioned, has been we've got a draft that's already kind of there, and I'd encourage you to go out and play with it. Um, uh, Joel Willis has done a fabulous job of taking the information that, uh, that Dick and I have provided uh, on each of these locations, um, and it's now available or will be available uh, on this website, and it'll have an introduction to the Bartram Trails in Putnam County with background, all kind of background information. Um, as well as the resources and links to the, lo to the information that we use to identify the site so you can do your own identification. Um, then it'll give each of the locations complete with commentary from the committee, uh, journal entries, um, images and maps, uh, resources and links, and most importantly, the actual coordinates for the site. Um, then it'll have the natural history information and maps. Um, just to kind of give you an example of what, the, what that experience would look like, um, as you're paddling along the river and you come to a, a location, there would be a little sign like this, a minimal footprint. Um, and what we'd like to do is use, uh, heavily rely on what's called augmented reality technology. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I thank my wife for that. She gave me, she's a... She's a web, you know, guru person, and that, oh yeah, that's web, web, uh, augmented reality technology, and um, using quick response code. If you've ever wondered what that little thing up there, that's a that's QRC, quick response code. But the idea is that you could go up with your cell phone. I know each of you has yours with you now. Uh, you just point it at that, and you click it, and that gives you instant access uh, to the actual website. This is what the marker would look like it have you know here you are you click it with your cell phone and then it takes you directly to the website and there once you've got that on your cell phone or your iPad or whatever technology you choose um, you can actually leaf through see the writings the the journal entry you know on January 25th um, this is what we saw you can read John's entry you can read Williams writings about that site it's all right there at your fingertips so you can actually have that uh, maximum experience and all that is available um, on the website now if technology works we'll actually take you there an augmented reality experience <laughs> oh no there up oh, there's a mouse okay let's see will it work it's thinking we may be there Hold your horses. All right, unsupported browser, what the heck? Yeah, and, and because this is the way technology always works, there will also be printed maps that you can take <laughs> uh, Yeah. We will have printed maps. They are a key component. 
Okay. Now, I anticipated this, so, uh, so we can all relax. Um, this is what the website would look like. It won't work here, but it, this is what it'll look like. Um, and as you can see, there are actual tabs for the um, for information uh, about uh, each site, and you can click along the tabs and get that information. Uh, kind of key to the very top there is which, uh, under the Bartram Trails that says Home and Locations. As you click on Locations, all 31 sites will come up in a little menu, and you can click on your site. Uh, Palatka or Rollstown, wherever you happen to be. And there you have expert commentary provided by moi. <laughs> and then you'll have um, those, the maps so you can actually see, okay, uh, to the extent possible, we've actually approximated what the, uh, what the trail looked like. Where did they come from? What's the likely route that they took to get there? And when they left, you know, how did they go? So you can really, as closely as possible, follow in the wake or walk in the footsteps of the Bartrams as they were doing it. And so all that information is there at your fingertips. Um, this would be one, this is, once you click on the location, this is kind of the menu that you'd see. Again, there's the commentary. And then you just click on the next tab over to get the journal entries. And then click over again, you get the maps, the images, uh, uh, actual Google image of where you are and what you'd see uh, as an aerial view. And that's kind of the website. And now kind of the ghost of my hero, John Bartram, not William. And that's my part of the presentation. <laughs>